Welcome everyone to another Speak Truth podcast. I'm your host Blake Gideon and uh, I've got Jonathan Miles here with me today and we uh, once again are going to deal with some of the major religions and cults of the world and what's our topic for today Jonathan? All right today's topic we're going to be covering Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses. Yes sir. Yep. yep. Well uh, that's interesting. They uh that's an interesting group of people, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So what are your, what are some of the questions you have? Um, so the first question that I have for you, mm-hmm. let's start off with some of their beliefs and their um, origin, okay. how they originated. Right. All right. So uh, just a couple of things to begin with. First of all, Jehovah Witnesses, uh, it's become one of the most significant cults in the world. Uh, the largest cult being that Mormonism. Uh, which Jehovah Witness place is a close second. And uh, as of 2019, there's an estimated 8.7 million people who adhere to the teaching and practices of Jehovah Witness. 8.7 million. Hmm. Uh, now, how many of those are actually Jehovah Witness or just whatever it may be, but, but, but that is uh, the last estimate that I could find since 2019. Um, but when did it begin? Well, it began in the late 1870s, so it's not old. You know, we think about Christianity being, you know, um, uh, you know, over, well, you know, at least if you go with, you know, 2,000 years. Uh, But nevertheless, um, there began, uh, Jehovah Witness began in 1870 uh, as a result of a man by the name of Charles Russell. Okay, now let me tell you a little bit about him. He was part of what was known as the Restoration Movement. And he began uh, publishing his heretical doctrine in a periodical entitled Zion's Watchtower and Herald of Christ's Presence. Mm -hmm. That was the name of his periodical. Uh, It's quite interesting, though, because Russell grew up in a religious home. He actually... Uh, attended a Presbyterian and a congregational churches as he was growing up. As a teenager, uh, he began to question some of the key doctrines of the Christian faith, uh, such as the Trinity, uh, deity of Christ, um, uh, eternal punishment. He uh, he also had been a follower uh, of the Seventh Day Adventist movement, um, which an umbrella term for those who were influenced by the 19th century American preacher William Miller. Hmm. Um, the Seventh-day Adventists, were, uh, they're kind of known for uh, making false predictions concerning Christ's return. As a matter of fact, William Miller, who is the, you know, the founder of the Seventh-day Adventists, uh, uh, predicted that Christ would return in 1843. Um, and Russell, who is the father of the Jehovah Witness movement, insisted that Christ would return, or he already did return in a non-visible way in 1874. So, of course, uh, you you see those Adventist, uh, Seventh-day Adventists kind of, uh, you know, carried over into some of his beliefs. But, um, in eight, well, his, his prediction that Christians would be, he also predicted that Christians would be resurrected in 1878. Russell did. So he said, Jesus has already come back. It was non-visible, 1874, and he believed that Christ would resurrect his people in 1878. Of course, that failed, and as a result of it failing, Russell began to distance himself from the Seventh-day Adventist movement, and he started his own publishing company, and he started this in 1881, and that is known as the Watchtower Um Watchtower Bible and Track Society, and which has published over 16 million copies of, of his books and pamphlets mm-hmm. and uh, by, the, by the time of his death in 1916. So he was a prolific writer, wrote a lot, published a lot, and like I said, over 16 million copies by his death in 1916. Yeah. So when you see Jehovah Witnesses today and, and they come to your house and, and they leave a Watchtower magazine, well, you know that you know that was started by Charles Russell, hmm. who was known for predicting and failing in his predictions, which makes him a false teacher. 
makes him a false prophet. Absolutely. Now, there's another key figure that who followed uh, Charles Russell, and that is a man by the name of J.F. Rutherford. And uh, he took over and was elected president of the organization in 1916. He was not a prolific writer like Russell was, but nevertheless, he, he did write. And, uh, and he, is con- he was considered to be an uh, infallible prophet. So, uh, and that's important for us to understand. So that means that the, the Watchtower Bible Track Society, uh, the Watchtower pamphlets or magazines, whatever you want to call them, that people receive, the Jehovah Witness believes that pamphlet to be infallible. They believe it's written by a living prophet, mm-hmm. and it's equal to Scripture. And uh, and then later on, Rutherford dies in 1942. And then there was a man. Then there's a man by the name of N. H. Knorr who became president of the Jehovah Witness. Um, some of the most famous famous Jehovah Witnesses, Prince was a Jehovah Witness. Serena and Venus Williams, Jehovah Witness. Michael Jackson, Jehovah Witness. Dwight D. Eisenhower, Jehovah Witness, grew up Jehovah Witness. But uh, so those are some key figures. But what other questions do you have for me? Well, th- that's, that's some good insight. Uh, yeah. I'm actually learning a little bit more myself. Um, the next question that I have for you is how, do, how does Jehovah Witness doctrines deviate from Orthodox Christianity? Okay. Well, great question. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the main beliefs yeah. within Jehovah Witness. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses are most well known for denying the Trinity and, and also the deity of Christ, the personhood of the Holy Spirit, and uh, the doctrine of eternal punishment. Yeah. So these are all essential beliefs to the Christian faith. Uh, as a matter of fact, you, you cannot deny the deity of Christ and deny the Trinity and the personhood of the Holy Spirit um, and be a Christian. So these are definitely not Christians. Uh, this, this is a cult. And so here are some of their main beliefs. Uh, number one, they believe that the Father alone is God, just, just the Father, so no triune God. Um, and they believe that uh, the sole identity of the Father is based upon his name, Jehovah. Thus, they use the, the Hebrew name Jehovah. Um, and they believe that Jehovah, the Father, is the only God in Scripture, which would uh, which results in them denying classical uh, Trinitarian doctrine. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's a key thing for them, is that uh, they believe that Christianity actually teaches three gods. Um, it's the same thing that Islam accuses Christianity of that we believe in three gods, whereas the reality is we believe in one God. Uh, in three persons, uh, and they would totally reject that. <laughs> and since they don't believe in the the triune God, then obviously they don't believe that Jesus Christ is uh, equal to God the Father. Um, they teach actually that Jesus was a created being, mm-hmm. um, specifically that he, before taking on human flesh, they teach that he was. Uh, actually, and is the archangel Michael. That's what they believe, that Jesus is the archangel Michael. Even though they refer to Jesus as the only begotten of God, uh, what they mean by that is that Jesus is the first created being. Hmm. So they see Jesus not as the creator, but as a part of God the Father's uh, creation, which is a heresy. Um, they also deny that Jesus propitiated the wrath of God. Um, they don't believe, you know, and this is because they deny eternal punishment. So because they deny eternal punishment, there's no need for the wrath of God and there's no need for the wrath of God to be satisfied. So they would deny his deity and um, the, the importance of Christ's atoning death upon the cross. Uh, another, key, another key belief within Jehovah's Witness is their... Uh, their blatant denial of the personhood of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for the Jehovah Witness, the the Holy Spirit is not a person, mm-hmm. but he is an emanating or uh, yeah emanating or active force of God. Uh, 
you, you can't help but think about maybe the movie Star Wars and the Force be with you, um, and and that's kind of this, you know, emanating active force. And so we know that the Holy Spirit is a He. We know He is a person. We know He is the third person of the of the Godhead, uh, equal to both the Father and the Son, right. which the Jehovah Witnesses would blatantly deny. And again, they also deny, as I've already made reference to, is the doctrine of eternal punishment. Um, for the Jehovah Witness and their theology, they believe that the body and soul are inseparable. So we believe that your body and soul are separated at death. They say, no, your body and soul are inseparable. So when the soul dies, the body also dies, uh, which leads to... Uh, a denial of an immortal soul. They don't believe that the soul goes on uh, to exist. Uh, they believe it's ultimately annihilated. That your body and soul, when you die, are just annihilated. You cease to exist if you are not a Jehovah Witness. You just cease to exist. Mm -hmm. There's no eternal punishment. Now, um, Jehovah Witnesses do teach, though, that there are 144,000. That number is mentioned in Revelation 7, 4, not in reference to the Jehovah Witnesses, uh, even though they interpret it that way. They believe that the, a faithful Jehovah Witness is a part of the 144,000, and heaven is reserved for that 144,000. They believe that the remainder of the Jehovah Witnesses that are more than 144,000 will be resurrected from the dead and live forever on, on this new earth. But if you're not a Jehovah Witness, you just cease to exist. You're just annihilated. Hmm. So, so those are some of their key beliefs, and you can see how those are, you know, drastically different from what the Scripture actually teaches. So, um now, here in a moment, I'm going to talk about how this difference or how does this hold up against biblical Christianity. Absolutely. But, but before I do that, uh, you know, I hear what Jehovah Witnesses believe, and I'm like, man, that is just, that's out there, and it's so far from what the Scripture teaches. Right. So the question is, is why do people believe in this form of false teaching? Why are there so many adherents? Right. And... Um, and I believe there's a couple of reasons. One reason is that the Jehovah Witness, it, they do insist that Scripture is the only source of divine revelation. And so that, that you know, so they come across as being Bible people. Right. Okay, and that attracts people. But this is a faulty conclusion. And the reason being is because they also hold the Jehovah Witnesses' watchtower as to be infallible as well. Hmm. So they're not just teaching the Bible, they're teaching their, their own doctrine. Um, again, they distribute millions of copies of, of the Watchtower magazine, and they treat the, they treat the interpretation as infallible. Um, but they, you know, they, also, they also place a lot of emphasis on proselytizing. I mean, you're going to see Jehovah Witnesses out almost every weekend, knocking on people's doors. Um, and uh, they send out their members all over the world, and and their purpose is to convert. Right. And a lot of people are, you know, they're 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 drawn to that. They're drawn to the moralism uh, of the Jehovah Witness present. They come across as moral people, upright, strong families. Uh, it is a monotheistic religion or cult, um, but they present themselves as morally clean. They present themselves as people of good health. Right. Um, and upright behavior, and uh, and that attracts people. Uh, but the reality is that they're is that they're leading people astray. Um, I, I tell you, one of the strongest, probably one of the strongest draws to Jehovah Witness, is the fact that it's a multi ethnic organization. Yeah. I mean, uh, which is lacking in a lot of other religious groups, um, and so that that is something that they have done well with. Um, however. We, we have to remember that uh, this is a cult to, to run from. Absolutely. Okay? So, and, and one of the reasons I'm going to say that is because how does it differ or how does it hold up? How does it hold up to biblical Christianity? Right. You know? And uh, you're going to see that it doesn't hold up well. 
Now, let me say this before I look at the, 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 my notes. But So the, the Jehovah Witnesses say, you know, we believe in the Scripture. Right. We say, we believe in the Scripture. Um, but the reality is, is that the Jehovah Witnesses have their own translation of the Bible. They have, they have what they call the New World Translation. And uh, I'm reminded of Ch Thomas Jefferson. Uh, there's there's a, uh, an old Bible out there called the Jefferson Bible. Um, and the reason it's called that is because Thomas Jefferson went to the Bible and he took out the miracles of the New Testament. So he went in, he didn't believe in the miracles. And like, this is something, it's called demythologizing. So take the miracles out because those are just myths. And then whatever is left is what the true teaching is. And, and the Jehovah Witness with their New World Translation they bring their doctrine, their preconceived doctrinal ideas into the text. Mm -hmm. So when they translated their New World Translation, it, almost every passage that upheld the deity of Christ, they reworded. Right. And I'll give you an example of that. In John chapter, in John chapter 1, um, the Word of God reads this, and and please pay attention to this, those who are listening. Um, this is just one example of what, how the uh, Jeho the New World Translation is actually not a translation, but a a, a book of of demons. So he says in uh, John chapter one verse one, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, that's what the Bible says. Um, it's a great, you know, translation of the Greek text. Well, if you read the New World Translation, it'll say this. Now, notice the R says, and the word was God. There's no article in the Greek there. They add the article right. in their translation. So their translation says, and the word was a God. <laughs> Little g. But the Greek text, the article's not there. It says the word was God. But because they deny the deity of Christ, they add the article A. And they've done that in several places uh, uh, throughout their translation of what they believe to be the Word of God, which is a perversion. Mm. So, um, which brings me to, to uh, um, which brings me to how does it uphold to Christianity? Not very well, because Christianity teaches that the triune God is, is the true and living God. And so uh, God, who the only true God who created the world, is triune. And, this, and, the, and the, the Scripture consistently upholds this reality, uh, you know, the three persons of the Godhead. And uh, we don't have time to, to look up all these passages, but I'm going to give you some passages for our audience to, you can either write down or come back and listen to later. But, but here are some uh, key verses that uphold the reality of a triune God. Uh, Matthew 28, 19. Uh, 2 Corinthians 13, 14. You also have scriptures that refer to the Father as God. Isaiah 63, 16. Luke 11, 2. John 4, 23. We also see in scripture where the Son is referred to as God. John 1, 1. Romans 9, 5. Colossians 1, 15 through 16. Hebrews 1, 3. And then we also have scriptures where the Holy Spirit is referred to as God. Acts 5, 3 through 4 is one example. So we can conclude that not only is the Father fully God, but we conclude that the Son as well is fully God. Um, Jesus himself reveals himself as Jehovah. You see this, you know, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, and, and, the, and, and comparing Exodus 3, 14 with John 8, 58. Clearly, Jesus affirms his deity. Jesus claimed to be, he, he claimed equality with the Godhead or in the Godhead. John 8, 58, John 10, 30. Um, and the Bible teaches that Jesus is God in every way. Romans 9, 5, Philippians 2, 5 through 6. And the Bible also reveals that all things were made through him, through Jesus. John 1, 3, Colossians 1, 16. And so uh, scripture teaches this also about the Holy Spirit that he is a, communi a communicative divine person. He, he has all the personal aid, uh, attributes 
Um, he is the agent of, of uh, the personal agent of supernatural revelation. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, the writer of Hebrews appeals to the Spirit's divine authorship. And you see that uh, um, in Hebrews 3, 7. But then you also have Ananias and Sapphira who lied to the Holy Spirit. And then they also said, and he also, Peter said, you have not lied to man, but to God. Right. So Peter himself saw the deity in the Holy Spirit. So we have the Bible affirming that there's one God. And we have the Father referred to as God. We have the Son referred to as God. We have the Spirit referred to as God. We have all three persons uh, manifested at the baptism of Jesus. Um, and then you have, you know, throughout the Old Testament, God referring to himself in the plural form. Let us create man in our image being one example. Yeah. And so uh, when you look at what the Bible actually teaches about the Trinity and, uh, and, uh, and, and the personhood of each of, each, uh, of the Trinity, um, you can actually see that Jehovah Witnesses, do, do, their beliefs do not hold up to Scripture. Um, especially their belief in the, you know, the eternal death. We believe in Christianity that eternal death is the destination of the wicked. Right. Um, that, that God's punishment against sin is eternal death in hell. Um, so now, the Bible teaches that man's soul is immortal, which would be contrary to what Jehovah's Witnesses believe. We see the reality of the immortal soul in Genesis 126, Ecclesiastes 12, 5 through 7. Uh, we see God's judgment against man's sin in the garden. It was an eternal death. By his disobedience, Adam brought spiritual, physical, and eternal death on himself and his natural born descendants. You see this in Romans 5, 12 through 21. Uh, scripture uses the objective, or uh, yeah, the, I'm sorry, the adjective eternal to qualify the nature of punishment. Right. That is due man's sin. Uh, it's eternal punishment. Jeremiah 20, 11. Right. Matthew 18, 8. Matthew 25, 46. 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. Jude, verses 6 through 7. Also, Daniel 12, 2. Mark 9, 44. All these verses uphold the reality of eternal death, eternal punishment in hell, and separation from God. Uh, The idea that God annihilates a person's body and soul is contrary to biblical teaching. And not only that, it's contrary to God's eternal justice. You know, if we believe that, that, that when we die, we're just annihilated, what does that say about the, is God's justice eternal or not? Yeah, God's justice is eternal. So if God has eternal justice, doesn't his eternal justice against sin demand eternal punishment? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, and, you, and you see the reality of this in passages like the Jesus says, I came to give eternal life, uh, John 3, 15 through 18, even though all sinners deserve eternal death. So uh, those are some of the major distinctions. Yeah. Yeah. What else you got for me? Well, so I would say the last question yeah. is, how can one begin to share the gospel Great. with these false teachers, yeah. against these false teachers? Yeah. Um, let me just say, I'm not big on, like, inviting Jehovah's Witnesses into your house. I don't, I mean, they're, they're deceivers. Right. They are a part of a cult. They are preaching and teaching the doctrine of demons. I'm not going to invite that into my house. Okay, um, now does that mean I shouldn't ever try to witness to Jehovah Witness? Of course not. But we need to be very discerning about that. But if you're going to witness to a Jehovah Witness, I would encourage you to do you know at least a couple of things. One is focus on what the Bible teaches about the deity of Christ. Um, I, I know that the Jehovah Witnesses have their own translation of the Bible, which is highly inaccurate. Um, but nevertheless. There are there there is a passage that they were not that they didn't contaminate, and uh, one such passage that is still in their Bible is Isaiah nine six. Hmm. 
or the promised Messiah, the promised Messiah is referred to as mighty God. So Jesus being the Messiah is mighty God. Um, the New World Translation has also sought to change the wording of Hebrews 1 since it clearly attributes deity to Christ. However, in Hebrews 1.8, God the Father addresses the Son by the name Jehovah. The Father calls the Son Jehovah. And he does this by citing Psalms 102 verses 25 to 26. Right. So there there are passages uh, that we could take them to, even in their own Bible. Um, finally, although Jehovah Witnesses have attempted to strip the Bible of its many clear references to Jesus, um, and especially they they lifted, they, they did away with passages that showed the disciples worshiping Jesus, uh, because for them that's no good. So you have passages like Luke 24, 52, and this is the passage they cannot avoid. You cannot avoid this passage. Uh, and in this passage, the disciples worshipped him. Right. And he didn't reject it. He didn't rebuke it. He received their worship. Why? Because he is God in the flesh. So I would focus on that, the deity of Christ. I would also focus on the reality of, of just punishment for sin. You know, they deny the reality of just punishment. Um, but we have verses like Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, right. uh, which points to the fact that physical death leads to eternal death without Christ. Um, Jesus and the apostles taught the just penalty of sin. They taught eternal punishment. Jesus himself taught eternal punishment. Uh, Matthew 25.46, 2 Thessalonians 1.9, Jude 7. And so uh, I think primarily you, you, you wouldn't be able to cover all their false ide ideologies, but I think if we could really focus on the deity of Christ and the reality of, of just punishment, that might be the best way to approach a Jehovah Witness when it comes to sharing the gospel with them. If we can help them to understand that Christ indeed is divine and he died upon the cross to save us from eternal punishment, uh, we would go a long way in helping them to see the truth. That's good. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for tuning in today. Until we meet again, serve the king.